So, how's your birthday been going, Heartman? Not too bad. Someone gave me some leftover chunk clips because the assorted box that they got was too big to finish. Then why didn't they just get a smaller box? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, you got anyone special to see today, Heartman? Nah. Well, well, you never know. Maybe you'll find someone someday. I mean, you've got a lot of heart. Gee, what gave you that impression? <laughs> what about you, Amhotep? Anything exciting happened to you today? I had my chance at love during my first life. It was glorious! But there did occur an odd happening earlier today. At exactly 10.18 a.m., I discovered a random vortex while I was minding my own business outside. It was like a tear in the fabric of reality, and all I could see inside of it was static. These have been popping up exponentially since last year. Whoa! Oh, that's weird. Edman tells me that the static is what he sees when he slips through the cracks of other dimensions. He calls it quantum foam. Everything he does starts with quantum. Anyway, I'm gonna head out. Alrighty then. Have a happy Valentine's Day, Heartman. You as well. Think about it. No one has ever made an explanation as to why those vortices keep appearing. Perhaps it has to do with Dan's plan of creating the perfect world for himself, which I have a feeling he's getting close to. Dan's old journal. No. No, that can't be right. No. Mm, no. No. No, what the heck? Claudius. Hello, Jack. Impeccable timing, my friends. Follow me. So, what have you summoned us for this time, Imhotep? Okay, this is all going to sound very crazy, but I've been doing some thinking, and I believe I've had an epiphany. Oh, this ought to be good. I take it you all remember when we met a fiery demise on December 7th, 2018, along with the rest of the world? Oh, for God's sake! Why do we need to talk about this again? Because I only solved half of the puzzle. The unspeakable one gave us a riddle. The truth is hidden behind the art. To me, this meant looking into Dan's journal since he had a drawing on the cover of the binder that bound it, but... I failed to look further. Do you remember looking at the entry that explained why he did what he did? Faintly. I remember the bottom of the page was missing for some reason. Which brings us to our next clue. What we read, what we thought about the Ghosts of Apocalypse being responsible, was not enough to complete the riddle. So what was missing? Behind the art? Look around you! Dan tells me that he draws almost every day. A passionate hobby to accompany his occupation as Almighty Tallest. Who do you think he happens to draw the most of? Or rather, who he draws the most of? Monica and Yuri from DDLC? 
Precisely. I believe that these two characters, which have captivated him ever since he found out about that game, had some significance in his suffering. Especially that one. Do tell. I've served Daniel for six years, and in that time, I've learned that he is, as he puts it, emotionally unstable. Despite the comfort that Princess Twilight has brought him and the love that she gives him, I think that Dan was depressed because he felt some kind of emptiness inside of him, and that he wanted to bring Monica and Yuri into our world, the real world. But something must have went wrong. But the Infinity Stones, how could they possibly fail? To create life, one must giveth a soul, and the Soul Stone contains the Ghosts of Apocalypse, who are not exactly on the side of good. So you suggest that they prevented Dan from making the Dokis real, and therefore plunging him into a cold and bitter loneliness that forced him to restart the world? Bingo. Okay. This is too much for me. Wait, where are you going? Bruh, I know you're my best pal and all, but... I can't believe everything you tell me. That... that just doesn't sound right. As far as I know, Dan's been spending all day with Princess Twilight, and I can't imagine him to be miserable enough for that to be the reason for what happened. Unfortunately, despite your evidence to back this up, I must too claim that your thesis is not true. But why? Look, I want to believe you, but does it even matter at this point? I thought your original reasoning made enough sense, but now you're just adding more to it that makes it superfluous. He may not be the most mentally sound ruler, but Dan's not completely insane. He can accept that Monica and Yuri aren't real. I mean, as cool as it would be, I'm afraid they lie in the realms beyond us. And so too does your hypotheses. I don't get it. Those guys are smart. They should be able to figure out, as I have, that our friend and leader has an obsession, an addiction to something he cannot have. Very astute observation. Vitalist! I... I did not expect you to come home so soon. Your theory has proven correct. Wait, I was right? Yep, as it turns out, the Ghost of Apocalypse needed my rage as a tool for carving this planet into something much more malleable. That's why you've been seeing these vortexes pop up more frequently. The weird are coming in, and the normal are being wiped out. Also, keep in mind, this is a new world. A world that abides by my rules. Of course. It all makes sense now. But why? Why did it have to be this way? My goals are beyond your understanding. As far as I know, there is no way for anyone, including myself, to be completely happy in this world. Every day, I imagine a future where I can be with them. That's all I really want. But I was robbed of that destiny when I believed I could be God. Not just a God, but THE God. The one who ultimately decides what is right and wrong in the world. But what I wanted was too much. If Monica and Yuri existed, there would be nothing to perfect. I would have the perfection right there in front of me. And I happily would have brought Sayori and Natsuki into the real world too, as I know someone who would want that very, very much. And that is why I firmly believe that there is no true happiness on planet Earth. I know I may have acted on the contrary while I've been around you guys, but that's because I've been trying to find the happiness for myself. And throughout all my success, there's always that one little thing that's missing. I... I am so sorry, my tallest. 
I had no idea that there was an even bigger rain cloud that loomed over your head than what I had previously believed. And here I thought you were taking things pretty well since that event. I'm sorry, I should have left this knowledge to you and you alone. Actually, that's not entirely true. The Great Old Ones know about my secret too. That's how Haster knows it. And that's how Pennywise was able to taunt me with it last Halloween. But now that you know it too, I'm afraid I can't let you leave with this information. Wait, what are you doing? Uh, you can trust me with this information? Uh, I, I've served you for six years, I have no reason to back down now. I won't tell a single soul, I promise. I know you won't, and I'm going to make sure of it. Stop! What are you doing? Make no mistake, your intelligence has shined once again. But there does exist such thing as forbidden knowledge. When you wake up, you will be safe in your home with no recollection of what happened tonight. And I will continue to plan in the shadows. Ha 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 ha!